Jack's going to be playing this one tomorrow night, actually. But, you know, the inlaid pieces, that's so intricate. It, it, well, it gets a lot more intricate than that, really. Yeah. There's, there's a, that's a whole nother artistry. There's a whole nother artistry to that. Well, it's absolutely beautiful. You want to? Yeah, let's look at a guitar now yeah, that Larry, we, Larry made. <coughs> this guitar is my first instrument, and it was um, inspired by my canoes as well. The, the top is made from 22 strips of wood uh, left over from my canoe. And uh, the bridge is actually a piece of cherry from a pallet as well. The, um, the back is uh, a cherry strip down the center. I believe that piece came from another friend uh, named Ed Winterstrom. This is walnut uh, that also Chet, our friend Chet Dickerson, was, was going to chuck into the fireplace. Um, you have to watch Chet, <laughs> don't you? <laughs> well, it was. Chet it, makes really high quality stuff. <laughs> he, he only uses the best stuff when he makes it. Yeah, Chet's stuff. probably the best yeah, builder a, among yeah, us. Yeah, he's the best builder that we and, have. Uh, and it was a lot of work to get the wood to stabilize. I had to do the same thing, mix epoxy with uh, the charcoal and spread it around both sides. So it was a lot of work. And notice this is a classical guitar. Yeah, this is, actually this is a nylon string guitar, um, but with a neck that is, is um, narrower than a typical classical guitar neck. And that's because I don't like those wide necks, but I wanted a nylon string guitar. Are all of you who build these instruments are all of you mus musicians? Um, most of us. I mean, I would most imagine you would have most to be. Of us, most of us play or are trying to play. Although there are some people who build who don't play at yeah. all. I would say that uh, it, it's good to know that in these days and times, and they, they made the comment that we're living in the golden age of luthiery now because we have access to the expertise because of the information age, right. it's easy to find instructions and, and uh, all the materials. You can just go online and you can, uh, lots of specialized tools make this kind of work easier. It depends on how much you want to go by hand or how much you want to machine it. And uh, You know, there are CNC's, computer, computer numerical. Right. I'm so that they can nearly build the instrument. And many of the large builders have gone that way. But it's, we think it's pretty special to just take pieces of wood that you know where they came from or local materials and spend a little bit of time with it and come up with something that you've created. I think that's what makes it so special. Yeah. I mean, obviously building instruments is not as an, an easy thing, but if you're getting it sort of churned out with computer, that's one thing. The love, the talent that goes into doing something like this yourself, I think is such a special thing. And patience. And patience. patience. It's a study in patience. Yeah, right. You have one more guitar? Yes. We'll look at all of these. Oh, I see some other things. No, I don't. I thought I saw a violin, but I don't. <coughs> this guitar is, um, <coughs> has a redwood top, which there are some guitars made out of. It's not real common for guitar tops, but this piece of redwood uh, I got from Woody here. And uh, it's it has some knots in it, which is a no-no for instrument oh. makers. Most, uh, actually, not for instrument buyers, typically buyers don't like to have these little pin knots in here, but apparently they don't affect the sound, and, um, this and they add some character. This redwood yeah. came from uh, leftover scraps from a hot tub making process. <laughs> they took these big boards and they shaved off the, the excess, and the excess was good size to make instruments out of. So this um, this piece of this rosette is um, a piece of maple that one of the other luthiers, Dennis McKim, in the group, gave to me. Um, the walnut bindings uh, from left over from the walnut that Chet gave me, and uh, the back and sides are cherry. This is beautiful. And the cherry was given to me by another friend, Ed Ed Winterstrom. I think it's just remarkable what you do. You guys who are who do these, I'm gonna. Do you play together? Do any of you play together? Some. For we, when we have our meetings, we jam a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. You're you're members of Blue Ridge Luthiers. Right. I said that right. All right. Can you tell us about the organization? Is it a club? Is it a business? 
What is it? It's, <laughs> it's just a loose association of, of, of people that want to get together yes. and enjoy sharing ideas about building. And uh, I think you can tell already that we're lucky to know each other because we help each other a lot. You know, for example, Chet has a, a very nice shop and he can take a piece of wood and thickness sand it to precisely the, the, the thickness that you need for a guitar. And uh, Larry, uh, you saw that rim he made, he made me some pieces of wood so I can try one of those staved rims for a drum that I'm building. So we're always getting ideas and, and learning how to do new things from each other. Are you considered professionals? I mean, I would think of you as professionals. No. No? Well, I, well, I would consider some of us. Uh, Ch Chet certainly is a professional. He has instruments that he's selling in music stores. Yes. In fact, he recently, he recently sold a, dulce, uh, a um, uh, dobro from a music store in Floyd that was carrying his, mm -hmm. his instruments. What's a dobro? It's a <laughs> sly guitar, a hound dog guitar. Oh, okay. It's like a precursor to a pedal steel guitar. It has a resonator in it. And you put a metal slide on it and you get that real good twangy Hawaiian kind of sound gotcha. out of it. Are either one of you presidents, of either one the president of the organization? I tend to run the organization okay. simply because nobody else will. <laughs> <laughs> How many oh. members do you have? We have 11. Um, and we have a list of other folks that uh, we send out information to, uh, just on a kind of on an email list. And anybody we don't anybody can be on that list, and and they can go to our website www.blueridgeluthiers.com and and check it out. And uh, they can just send me an email message, and and I can add them to the list, or they can join the organization too. Are most of your members from Lynchburg or the Lynchburg area? We all over. Yeah, we go from Lynchburg or some Roanoke. Uh, I live in Wurtz, down by Smith Mountain Lake. Uh, we have a guy who lives all the way out in Tazewell, so covers a pretty broad area. How often do you meet? Well, it's um, it's whenever we can arrange to get enough people together. So it's probably every few months. Okay. Is when it when it comes out to be. I had a question down here. What's the main purpose in meeting as a group? But but now I know you help mm -hmm. each other. We yeah we share information uh, we share wood uh, you know we, we give advice um, we give a lot of good advice and a lot of bad <laughs> advice and, <laughs> and a lot of crazy ideas. Is there a membership fee? We have a twenty dollar annual fee although um, because we af actually haven't needed the money uh, we've waived a fee for this year for current members so. That's. All right, I read on your website uh, that your goals are to build instruments as a project together and that you sell some of these instruments to raise funds for mm -hmm. um, additional projects, causes, worthy causes. Can you tell me about that? Well, so far we've group built a, a guitar for a, a fellow member who uh, had a health problem. He, sadly, he passed away not long ago. and. Is that Steve Parks? Steve Parks, and um, they had a, a benefit for him. Uh, Steve lived near Harrisonburg, and uh, tell, tell her yeah. about that guitar. Well, so we had uh, talked about the kinds of things that we could do as a group, and we thought building something together would be just really fun, and, and allow us to share techniques and share ideas, and um, so when we heard that uh, the there was this thing called the Steve Parks Family, f or the Steve Parks Family Fund, and they were raising money um, for his family. And we thought, you know, if we could build an instrument and get it built in time to be auctioned at the, the Family Fund auction, that would be great. And we worked uh, really hard for a number of months and actually made the deadline. And uh, it got auctioned off and raised uh, twenty-six hundred dollars for the family. So it was great. It's wonderful. It was That's great. wonderful. I, mean, I think it's especially nice that you're doing something that you enjoy, but that you're also helping other people and, and causes and things. I, I think that, that certainly is. Yeah, so we're, we're looking for the, the next sort of project and the, the cause uh, to build another instrument together. As it looks right now, we're probably going to have a, a, a demo demonstration booth at, uh, in Appomattox this fall for the uh, railroad festival. Uh, right. that, that's a big thing for the uh, town of Appomattox. Oh, that'd be wonderful. And so we'll probably set up out there and 
have a lot of show and tell kinds of stuff, some pieces of instruments, you know, projects that we're working on to show off. But except for that, I don't think we have any particular.